When we look at the temptation in the desert, we can see in Luke, we could actually see that Jesus is tempted with two kinds of temptations. The first and the third, the devil is tempting Jesus' divinity. The second, he's tempting his humanity. Let's look at those temptations. In the first and the third temptation, the devil is saying to Jesus, if you are the Son of God, then turn these rocks into bread, cast yourself off the parapet of the temple. In either way, he is saying that temptation that Jesus will also hear at the end of his life. If you are the Son of God, it's tempting his divinity. Take from the Father that power and do not turn to the Father, but take that power and you take over that role. The second temptation is to his humanity. Remember, the devil does not say, if you are the Son of God. He just tempts him with something that Jesus does not refute, that all the powers in the world are his. And he all that Jesus has to do to receive that power is to bow down before the devil. What we're looking at in tempting his humanity is the first temptation that the devil gives. It's a variation of, you will be like God's. You will be like a god to all these nations that are mine to give you. And remember, at this time, we're talking about the Roman Empire, whose emperor people looked upon as gods. So it's that temptation that, uh, that is the human temptation and the first human temptation that the devil gives to Jesus. In all three temptations, Jesus gives the same response, but obviously phrased differently, citing the Bible. No, I will be obedient to the Father. And that's our response when we are dealing with temptation. I will be obedient to the Father. Now, something that's important to note is, you know, obviously in my business, there are those that have direct dealings with the demonic. They're called exorcists. And what exorcists will always teach is that, yes, there are times a demonic force does try to communicate. And the only thing that should ever be said to a demonic force, they told me, was, one of, was just two questions. What is your name and when are you leaving? The reason is, if you get into a debate with the devil or any demonic force, you will lose every time. And notice that Jesus doesn't really debate the devil. He just cites scripture and says, no, I will be obedient to the Father. And that is always our response. That's why the first thing we're called to do is to be obedient to the Father. Now, there are many people that turn away from that. And for example, I don't need to go to church on Sunday. I don't need to follow all these rules. And what they do is they turn away from that basic call, be obedient to the Father. Once they do that, or once anyone does that, then they're in the territory of the devil who can convince them of anything. One of my favorite examples of this is something that people have brought up many times, Saul Alinsky's Rules for Radicals. It's taught to many, not all, community organizers, and as you know, the book praises the devil, and the basic message of the book is very simple. Emulate the devil to get what you want. You know what? If you turn away from the Father and you reject obedience to God, the devil can convince you of anything. And that's a classic example. Because if you look very carefully of that message, emulate the devil to get what you want, your first question you should ask is, how do I emulate the source and the embodiment of evil and build a just society? And the second thing you'll notice is that if you read the book, there's a whole chapter there on how to take down the church. Now, it's an important to note that because many of the tactics listed in their book is, are the tactics being used against the church right now. But there's something interesting. In the late 1800s, in 1895, Pope Leo XIII had this intense image, this intense vision of the devil and the Lord speaking, and the devil saying to God that he was going to... Um, work against and try to destroy his church and God gave him him permission to try to do that said you will fail and then at the end of this time that he gave him you will be destroyed 
So when you go back to that time and see the devil is going to try to destroy the church, and we live in a time now where people are using the textbook to find the tactics to destroy the church, you go, isn't that fascinating? They think this is all their idea. It never has been. People have known this was going to happen since at least 1895. And so that whole message comes back to us. If you are not obedient to the Father, if you reject obedience to the Father, you're in the devil's territory, and he can convince you of anything including that his idea is yours. And so that brings us back to what is our call? Many people are telling us to uh, look at all the immorality in the world and to speak out against the immorality. Well, that's important, but the most important thing you can do is call people to be obedient to the Father. Because once you are obedient to the Father, once you are obedient to God, then you can see all the deceptions and the lies that are out there that people are falling for. And so the first thing is be obedient to the Father. That's what Jesus does. He receives the temptation against his divinity again at the uh, end of his life, uh, both as he's going to the cross and when he is on the cross. That same temptation pops up. If you are the Son of God, and it follows that get yourself off the cross, or in the case of the bad thief on the cross, get yourself off the cross and us as well. That same temptation continues, but Jesus responds the same way. First, he literally does not respond to the bad thief on the cross or Herod, but his response is through his action. I will be obedient to the Father. In today's gospel of the temptation in, in, in the garden, uh, in, in the temptation in the desert, is also a reminder to us that that too should be our response. We will be obedient to the Father in his teachings in the church, in his teachings in the gospel, in his teachings in his Son, Jesus Christ. God bless you.